Hey guys, uh, I hope uh, everybody is doing well and I hope you had a chance to check out our uh, agenda for today. Uh, I know that a lot of you are um, without power or there is the possibility of losing power. So I wanted to just go ahead and make the decision to record class today um, so that you're not stuck. Um, you know, if you lose power during class, there there are issues or things like that. So um, we'll just have this uh, this class recorded today. I'm going to put it up on YouTube and share the link with you, and then we'll just do class that way. Um, yeah, and then tomorrow, if you check your agenda, you will see that we have our mastery test. Okay, so we'll wrap things up today, and then you'll, um, and then you'll, you, uh, boy, I can't talk. Um, yeah, and then you'll you'll use your notes and take the mastery test tomorrow. Okay, sound good? Sweet. So we are on uh, the Women in Colonial America. Um, we're in the Unit Two, the Development of Colonial America tutorial. And we'll, we're working on women in colonial America, and we also have our notes up here, okay? So let's go ahead and let's get started. I'll give you a second here. If you need to pause the video now to get your notes open and get to slide number 32, please make sure you do that. Quick recap, uh, we are talking about how the colonies before America was an independent country. It was still owned by England. And we talked about how the economy of the three different colonial regions of New England, the middle colonies, and uh, the southern colonies, how the economies were all different. We then talked about how the government in the colonies uh, were, was all pretty much the same. It was controlled by England that the king appointed governors, but uh, people elected positions like representatives and that little by little, the colonies were able to create their own laws. Um, and they had some sort of vote within the taxes, but they were still pretty much subject to the British government. And um, we talked about how really England was mostly concerned with uh, trade with the colonies and making sure that the British government was making money. We then looked at four important people in colonial America. Um, and then we went into a little bit more detail of two of those people, Peter Zinger and uh, Andrew Hamilton. And now we are going to look at what life was like for women in colonial America. And what I want you to take away from this section is that the American experiment of colonization actually resulted in more rights and more freedom for women at the time. Again, it was not perfect, but women started to have a little bit more say uh, just because there weren't really a whole lot of established customs and norms that uh, society needed to adapt a little bit to this new uh, concept of American colonies. And so this presented an opportunity for women to get a little bit better position in life. And you'll see what I mean here as we uh, jump into this lesson. So uh, go ahead and make sure your notes are open. And we are going to uh, look at women in colonial America and then finish up with our summary. All right, here we go. Women in colonial America. Colonial women didn't enjoy the same rights and privileges that men did. Married women had no rights to their earnings, property, or inheritances. Widows inherited only one-third of their late husband's property. Women couldn't vote or serve on juries. They were expected to obey their fathers and husbands. Behavior viewed as unfeminine invited harsh punishment. But despite this inequality and repression, women made valuable contributions to colonial culture. In those days, people knew little about the causes of diseases or natural disasters. Sometimes unexplained illnesses were blamed on women practicing witchcraft. This idea probably led to the Salem witch trials. By the 1700s, the lives of colonial women had improved. Many young unmarried European women immigrated to North America as indentured servants, hoping to find a better life. The witch hunts ended for good. 
Women also had more access to education. Protestants believed that everyone should be able to read the Bible, so girls as well as boys received a basic education. Literacy rates for colonial women and the colonists in general were higher than those in Europe. Women used many skills at home, including spinning wool, preserving food, and making soap, candles, and other useful items. Every member of the family contributed to the family's well-being, and daughters were often valued as much as sons. All right, so you might say, well, that doesn't really sound like women were, were receiving a lot of rights, uh, and, and you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, women weren't receiving a whole lot of rights, but their position in life was slowly improving. As you can see, it was still not a great situation for women, but it was a little bit better than it was in England. Definitely a harder life, but things were a little bit better. Um, all right, so uh, married women had no rights to their... Women... Uh, earnings, property, or inheritances. So earnings, property, or inheritances. Widows inherited only one third of their late husband's property. All right. So if you were a married woman and your husband had, let's say, 100 acres, you would only get 33 of those acres. What happened to the other two thirds of those acres? Probably go up for sale, uh, might go to somebody else in his family, but the wife was not getting it. Uh, women couldn't vote or serve on juries, all right? And serving on a jury today is something that people kind of look down on and they say, oh, it's a waste of my time. But this is a way to improve your community, uh, to sit on a jury and to listen to cases and to have your voice heard is very important. Uh, they were expected to obey their fathers and husbands. Sometimes unexplained illnesses were blamed on women practicing witchcraft, right? And this is especially uh, interesting as we approach Halloween. A lot of times we look at uh, the Salem witch trials and I'm gonna share a video with you on the Salem witch trials tomorrow. Um, we always talk about the Salem witch trials around Halloween time, but, uh, basically what it boiled down to was that most, uh, scientists believe that there was a type of toxin, a fungus that was growing in the wheat at the time in Massachusetts. And as people would eat this, uh, toxic fungus, it would cause people to hallucinate. And people thought that they were being possessed by the devil and were accusing them of being witches. And so it's this really interesting situation where, um, you know, here we have a natural explanation for people being accused of witches and actually being killed uh, because of that. And as you can see, this idea probably led to the Salem witch trials. Uh, by the 1700s, the lives of colonial women had improved. All right, so things slowly got better over time. Women had more access to education and Protestants, all right? So this is the other side of the coin. We have Christian is the entire coin and we have Protestants on one side and Catholics on the other side of the same coin. They believe that everyone should be able to read the Bible. And it's getting cray cray over here. All right, and because of that, uh, literacy rates for the colonists were higher than those in Europe. All right, so here is a situation where uh, people could read more in these colonies than they could in the most prosperous, largest country and empire in the history of the world, which was England. Uh, women used many skills at home, including spinning wool, preserving food, and making soap and candles. This is the big thing. Daughters were often valued as much as sons. All right, typically... Um, as we saw, women only 
got about a third of their husband's property, a lot of wealth followed the uh, the male line. And specifically, if you're the firstborn son, it was a way of making sure that your family name didn't just fall by the wayside. If you could take all that wealth and pass it to the firstborn son, you could maintain the power of your family, right? But here we have a situation where life expectancy was a little bit lower, that there were far more men than there were women, as we're about to see. And so women had the ability to negotiate a little bit, and because of that, had a little bit more uh, importance in American society than in European society. All right, so let's keep going here. Women also had more. Because more men settled in the colonies than women, women had more say in matters of marriage. Unlike earlier times, marriages were decided between individuals instead of being arranged by families. This attitude toward marriage continues to this day. Colonial women often stepped out of the traditional roles of wife and mother. Many of them participated in running family businesses and managing estates. However, society didn't always recognize the participation of these women in management and business. Not all women found an opportunity in the New World. Poor white women had very limited opportunities, and enslaved people had none at all. In general, though, colonial American women of European descent had more education and freedom than women in Europe. All right, so kind of a strange situation where if you were a female, you probably wanted to go to uh, the colonies because you could have more freedom than you could in Europe. All right, so women had uh, more say in matters of marriage, and marriages were decided between individuals instead of being arranged by families, right? And as we said, it's because there were more men than women. So if we're going to look at this uh, economic principle that we're going to talk about later on in the year, supply and demand, if you have a large supply of something, meaning there's a ton of something available, people aren't going to want it as much. If you have a small supply of something, meaning very few numbers of something, by nature, people are going to want that more. So the fact that there were far more men than women meant that women could be selective of the men that uh, they were interested in and wanted to marry. On the flip side, since there were far fewer women, they were in much higher demand for men. So men wanted to, uh, you know, marry uh, women a lot more and men had, uh, or women had the ability to negotiate a little bit more. All right. So many colonial women participated in running family businesses and managing estates. Poor white women had very limited opportunities and enslaved people had none at all. All right, so this was the situation for women in colonial America. Let's select the correct answer. Here. What was the main reason for the increase in literacy among women in the colonies? All right, so why did the literacy rate or the rate of reading among women increase in the colonies? Was it many Protestant religious dom denominations felt it was important for everyone to read the Bible? All colonial religious communities supported gender equality. Women fought for gender equality in basic education. Or families felt the female members also had to contribute to the household economy. So, in other words, Protestants wanted everybody to read the Bible. Religious uh, communities saw the genders as being equal. Women fought for their rights in basic education for themselves or families felt that uh, women had to contribute to uh, the ability of the house to make money? The answer is Protestants wanted everybody to be able to read the Bible. All right, so let's go ahead and let's wrap this up. Uh, we have a summary, and remember at the end here, how did the geography of the different colonies and their distance from Britain affect the colonies, economies, government, and women's right. So 
we want to look at the geography, the distance of the colonies from England. How did that impact the, col the colonies, their economy, their government, and women's rights? Let's take a look here. My club was a great success because so many of us lent books to one another. We helped form America's first lending library. In 1742, we made a big leap and established the American Philosophical Society. The society brought together writers, scientists, scholars, mathematicians, and natural historians from throughout the colonies. One of our members, David Rittenhouse, built his own telescope and made some very important observations about the planet Venus in 1769. His findings made Europeans take notice. Soon, we had members from all over the world, including the famous explorer Alexander von Humboldt and German General Frederick von Steuben. We were also open to women. The Russian mathematician Princess Yekaterina Romanovna Voronsova Dashkova joined the society. But most of all, we were an American society. We formed to help promote learning and knowledge for all Americans. And we still do so today. Every year, thousands of people visit our museum in Philadelphia, where they learn about science, engineering, and other interesting areas of thought. All thanks to my friends and me in the club we formed way back in colonial America. All right. Congratulations, you have completed the tutorial of the development of Colonial America. Please, please, please make sure that you go back and you use your notes as you take your mastery test, okay? Remember, your mastery tests are what uh, make up your grade. These get reported back directly to me. You can go back and you can watch any of the videos that have been recorded and put up on YouTube if you have any questions about any of this. Um, also, please um, make sure that you go back and take any other mastery tests. You can take these mastery tests as many times as you want. If you're getting locked out, it's because you haven't finished all of the activities in the tutorial. So please go back, go through the tutorial again, and it will unlock the mastery test, and you could take it over. If you get a 40% and you want to do better, take the mastery test over. Just your highest score will be re uh, reported to me. Okay, so you could keep taking that mastery test. The idea behind it is become familiar with that material, all right, and do well, learn something. All right, guys, if you have any questions today, please send me an email um and uh keep me updated on uh if you guys lose internet or power or anything like that when you get it back just shoot me an email and say hey sorry you know can i have an extra day or something like that just communicate any sort of challenges that you have to me so that i can plan for it all right guys uh i hope that you don't lose power i hope that you don't lose internet and i hope you have a great day um and i will talk with you all later if I don't see you, uh, well, I won't see any of you until next Tuesday, So, except for my homeroom. All right, so have a great weekend, too. All right, guys, take care. Bye.